We, for a long time, were able to hire sewing machine operators that were born and raised here in the U.S. As time progressed, fewer and fewer people were interested in doing that sort of work. So we had to be more creative to find people that had some experience and wanted to learn. I never forgot, it was April 16, 2002, our first flight to Cleveland. After that, start new life, new, new everything new. From zero we started. <laughs> I grew up in uh, Khair Khana, Kabul, Afghanistan. When I was a child, my mom, she used to sew our clothes for us. And I helped my mom, I learned from her. One of my teachers, she had her own business. She said, hey, Fatima, it seems like you, you're good. Come on if you would like to work with her. One day, the lady, she didn't come. Then I heard she got a car accident. She was in hospital for two months. And then I ran her business. After that, I opened my own business because I see I love it, I want to do it. First some friend here, there, and then my business has got like, you know, so good. The beginning I came, I said, oh my goodness, I can't speak English. What about job? How I can raise them? I start with zero English, and I did a mistake, of course, you know. And the vice president, like Sal, he protected me a lot. He's a very gentle man. She worked in one of our sewing clusters and quickly showed us that not only did she have the ability to sew, but she had tremendous leadership ability as well. You know what? I, I like it. I love my job. Believe me, I feel like I work from my heart. Yeah? I don't like any, I don't want anything to affect anything for anything. We have more than 40 refugees, which represents about 20% of our sewing workforce. Absolutely, there'd be opportunity for other employers. What they'd be getting are really hardworking, dedicated people who care a lot about what they're doing and are so appreciative to have an opportunity to work. And, and that's a tough thing for most employers to find. She really was so instrumental in driving the process because she helped recruiting other people that she knew would be successful here at NSA. So she worked to help kind of ease other people into this really kind of traumatic move to a new country, to a new job, that sort of thing. And it's, it's been invaluable. And she had such a tough life ahead of her entry into the U.S. and trying to raise five children uh, on her own, essentially. I think someone who has that sort of character and will to, to be successful regardless of the circumstances and the cards that she was dealt uh, makes her extremely special. I was not worried about myself. I see what happened to our life, we lose everything, but my kids are too important to me. When I'm out like in school or something, I'm working or something, I always imagine like how it would have been if I was in my 20s like this in Pakistan or Afghanistan or how my father would have been or my mom in their age, like what they would have been doing at my age, you know. Yeah, I think about it sometimes, you know.
how the life would have been different. Being from Afghanistan, where girls don't get the opportunities that are taken for granted here, uh, my mom doesn't want me to end up not being able to do what I want. And seeing how far she's made it in life, you know, it's it be kind of sad if we don't, you know, make it anywhere past management level because she got there with like no English and anything. She didn't do any schooling. Exactly. That's all through hard work. Yeah. You know, she emphasizes taking that next step in life. You know, and, and never give up. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to leave your own country, you know, your motherland, your friends, family, and everything, try to, you know, go to, to some other country, leave everything behind. And there has to be a reason for you to do that. For example, we left our country and stuff, but, you know, we try to make a good living, you know, but just be peaceful, have something, a food on the table, you know, just something like that. I feel like everybody should be given a shot at the American dream. If they're hardworking, if they have skills, I think everybody deserves it. Having people that, that have come from their background integrated into what we're doing here is, is just really who we are as a country, but specifically who we are here at NSA. Of course, like I heard um, uh, American dream is like you have a house, work, and car, right? And um, thank God we have it. And everything is, you know, we're safe. And we are happy, we are very happy. Thank God, we are happy.